Now we're nearing an environment where the Russians are not just mobilizing, but mobilizing in force. They're finally beginning significant industrial upgrades. They're finally starting to churn out missiles and ammo and tanks in numbers. And they are finally doing a full-scale mobilization. This isn't the 300,000 that they did a few weeks ago. We're talking about at least another half a million men likely being in the theater within a very few number of months. And so by the time we get to May and June, the Russian military is going to look very different. And in that environment, especially with this lead up where the Russians aren't quite ready for big offensive operations, where they're lobbing missiles and drones into civilian infrastructure, it's really cracking through the ice in the German political discussion on what a strategic policy means. And that means more and better equipment is going to be going to Ukraine. And Lambrecht, the former defense minister, was part of an obstacle system that prevented that from happening. Now she's gone. So we're probably going to be seeing movement in Berlin on things like Leopard tanks. Now, the Leopard tank is one of the top two tank systems that exists in Europe, the other one being the M1 Abrams from the United States. And there are a large number of NATO countries, specifically in Europe, that have a relatively large fleet of these tanks in storage or in use. And they are probably the easiest ones for the Ukrainians to absorb in numbers. So there are a number of countries, specifically Denmark and uh, Poland, who have been pressuring the Germans in order to allow them to take these exported tanks and then send them on to Ukraine. That requires Berlin's approval. Uh, the big news is that we seem to have a deal between the Germans and everybody else in the Western Alliance about the Germans providing Leopard tanks to Ukraine. Now this is a main battle tank. It is the primary battle tank for most members of the NATO alliance. It is obviously German made and there are export clauses that uh, you can't share your tanks, your leopards with anyone unless the Germans give it the official approval uh, that has been withheld until this moment. The Germans have been saying that they don't want to be the ones taking the lead on this and they will only provide leopard twos in the circumstances where the Americans provide Abrams battle tanks which are the American uh, primary system. It appears that uh, there's been a, a compromise between the Schultz government of Germany and the Biden government of the United States to do some version of that. Uh, now there's a few things here. First of all, why the Germans have been so hesitant? I don't know if you know your history, but the last couple hundred years of history has not been, well, based on your point of view, it doesn't necessarily put the Germans in the best light. And so the idea that the Germans would ever, in a peaceful environment, decide that they should take a leadership position on military affairs is something that is antithetical not just to the German population in general, but the government of Schulz specifically. He, his party is the Social Democrats, and uh, they have basically made their bones in geopolitics about making sure that Germany is never an offensive power at all. Now, the Ukraine war is forcing everyone to reassess what uh, ideology shapes strategy and vice versa, but the idea, I gotta say, the idea that the Germans Germans are beyond hesitant to being a leader in military affairs in Europe and in the former Soviet Union. This is a really smart move. I mean, if the Germans just started providing weapons to one side or another in any war, regardless of what you think of the belligerents, I think we should all get a little bit nervous. So while the Ukrainians are the ones who are paying the price for this reticence, and I can understand why they've been upset to this point, you gotta admit, if you take an honest look at history, this is an A-OK -okay situation. The second issue uh, has to do with the Americans, specifically the Abrams tanks themselves. Now, the Leopards, they're good hardware. I'm not going to say tell anyone that German engineering, especially when it comes to weapon systems, isn't top-notch. The Abrams should be more accurately thought of as the pinnacle of armored equipment development. This is a system that is not merely a tank. It's a weapons system that has several integrated programs within it, some of which the Americans still consider top secret. So anything that the United States sends from its arsenal is going to honestly have to be dumbed down a significant amount. And that is going to, at a minimum, take time. There's also a question whether or not these weapons are going to be getting to the Ukrainians in any sort of reasonable time. Now, in the case of the Leopards, there are over a dozen countries 
in Europe that used them. And everyone except for the Germans has been arguing for sending these things for weeks now. So these the leopards can actually be on the front lines in Ukraine probably within two or three or four months, which means they can actually make a difference in the coming spring offensive, which will happen in May and June. And so from the Ukrainian point of view, that is absolutely essential. Now, from the American point of view, that is equally essential. And it's part of the reason why the Biden administration to this point has not provided the Abrams, because it is not battle ready in that way. Even if the Biden administration could just turn them over tomorrow, which it honestly can't, no one in Europe at the moment operates Abrams at all. And because so many systems on the Abrams are cutting edge and have not been replicated anywhere else in any country, the maintenance and supply, the logistical tail that's necessary to operate an Abrams doesn't exist anywhere in the world except for in the United States itself. So the United States is gonna to have to build facilities in Europe, probably some in Germany, certainly some in Poland, which is in the process of purchasing some Abrams, but that is going to have to stretch all the way into Ukraine. And if you wanna talk about something that might cross a red line or two with the Russians, a NATO logistical tail going all the way back to the continental United States for everything from arming to repairs, we're getting into a lot of gray areas there, but most importantly, the infrastructure does not yet exist. But for the Leopards, it's right there. Not only is Germany the manufacturer, it's operated by Finland and the Balts and Poland, all countries that border the conflict zone. So you can get leopards on the field of battle very, very quickly. Abrams, even if the training requirements were identical, which they are not, you're talking a minimum of a year, probably closer to three to build out the physical support infla infrastructure to get an appreciable number of Abrams in play. Now, there's some people who are saying, you know, you know, by getting an Abrams into Ukraine, that is a vote of confidence in the Ukrainians. Absolutely. That is a signal that the United States is not going to quit. Absolutely. Those are, those are relevant conversation points. But an Abrams in theater without that support infrastructure is a target that the Russians will try to take out. You do not use an Abrams battle tank for a photo op. You use it to ruin someone else's photo op. So do we have a political deal now to get Abrams into Ukraine? Sounds like it. That doesn't mean they're going to be on the battlefield anytime soon. The German state is in a bit of a geopolitical pressure cooker. It is surrounded by rivals and potential rivals. And in any era where the Germans have felt it's necessary to have a defense ministry, they've discovered that being surrounded and having a defense force that's worthy of the name generally triggers a lot of angst everywhere. And so you, you get one of two things. Either all the countries surrounding Germany gang up on it in order to put it in a box, in which case Germany loses a catastrophic war. War, or the Germans act preemptively in order to remove some of those potential rivals from the scene, in which case you get a war that ultimately puts Germany in a box. Uh, and whipping back and forth be these two extremes has been absolutely horrible for the Germans. So for the Germans, the post-Cold War environment in Europe has been the best it's ever been. Uh, you're talking about a golden age because NATO has provided defense but all the countries that border Germany are either neutral, like Switzerland, or are members of NATO, which is basically everyone else. And in that sort of environment, the Germans can kind of dither and become pacifist socialists, which, to be perfectly blunt, looking at the long stretch of German history, is much, 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 much better for everyone than the alternative.